ML Nation. This is Simon Chan. I am fired up to bring our special guest today. Today we have Cindy Walter. Hey, Cindy, are you ready to make it happen? I am so excited to be here. Thank you. Cindy Walter is a devoted wife and mother of four, a marathon runner and fitness instructor who has over 27 years of experience in the direct selling industry. She's a multiple six-figure earner and has a customer base of over 42,000 people and lives out in rural Ohio. Cindy credits her deep desire to impact others that's prevented her from quitting or failing to take action. So Cindy, welcome to the show. I'll give ML Nation a brief intro, but take us back 27 years ago. How were you introduced to direct selling? Sure, sure. Well, initially, it was by answering an ad. I um, I had a, a pretty troubled childhood. I kind of paid my way, um, started working at the age of 11, uh, babysitting for all the neighbors, uh, got a car at the age of 16, had to pay insurance and gas and all of that. So I was always working. And I answered an ad in the newspaper and went to this lady's house for what I thought was a job interview, and it was for a home party plan company. And so I got a taste of it at the age of... Uh, Gosh, I think I was 19 at the time, 18 or 19, and um, got a taste of it. And then once I, I moved and, and went on with my life, paid my my own way through college, which took a while, uh, got an associate's degree from one school, a bachelor's degree from another, paying my way, working my way through. And then I was reintroduced to it when I was getting ready to be a stay-at-home mom. A neighbor told me, you know, I was telling her, yeah, I went through all of this hard work to, to get my degree, and now I we, we had made the decision I'd be a stay-at-home mom, and I just felt like I'd like to somehow use my education and, and bring some income into the house. And she said, how about you know direct sales? How about getting, getting into direct sales? And I said, gosh, that would be a great idea. So I started with a company, stayed there for 10 years. Uh, first, first real go at it, I would say. I just dabbled when I was a teenager. And I earned a discount on products for my home, but I really wasn't successful yet, Simon. I had a lot of personal growth and development I still needed to do on my journey. Um, and, and so it, it was fun to get out a little bit. I had four kids in seven years, so it was a great excuse to get out of the house a little bit, um, give my husband some time with the kids, and it really taught me and opened my eyes to the industry. Someone introduced me 10 years later to my next company. There, I finally found some success. There, I started going to all of our conferences, um, earned incentive trips, really started personally develop my, developing myself, growing, reading books, listening to podcasts like this, and really started to see some success, significant success enough to where I started to be able to earn enough money that I could put money aside in all four of my kids' college funds. And it really got my husband's attention. Now he started taking it seriously too and I started to really financially contribute to the kids and to our home and to our to our lives and then about seven years ago I got tired of doing parties in people's homes for 20 years I loaded up my minivan with all my goods went into people's homes did parties and sold products and it was really hard it was fun I learned a lot. I, I was successful with it. Um, I was a top leader in my last company. I actually did get to speak on stage and do some training. I loved it. But I got to the point where my kids were all playing varsity sports. I didn't want to miss out on that. Why we're attracted to this business is for that time freedom. So I made a shift. And I actually joined more of an online network marketing company that I could do mobily from my phone anywhere. Um, and it was more around my love of health and wellness and fitness. And so I've been doing that for seven plus years now and best business decision I've ever made in my life. And, and now I get to really pay it forward and help other people achieve, achieve success too. And it's just a blessing. So let's go back to your teenage years. Um, the first time when you dabbled in it, why did you stop doing it? And then... Was it your dream to go to school or why did you get bored of it? Yeah, you know, I, I, I saw some possibilities in it, but quite honestly, it was not the right vehicle. I wasn't making enough money with it. So I made a lot more money waitressing and teaching fitness classes. So I just put my time and effort where I was making more money because I really had to make enough money to send myself through school. So it was really more of a money thing. And I was really young and, and not skilled. I You can make any company and product work if you really have that heart and you believe in the products and you're willing to go to work. And I just wasn't, I wasn't there. I was too mm. young and, and not ready at that point. Now you're, um, the company, so you were in another company for 10 years, not much success. And then the third company, 
you start you had a success you were on stage but you, and you said you went through a lot of personal development you went through a lot of growth what triggered that like you know you, you by then you've been in the profession for 10 plus years what triggered you to say, hey i gotta change i gotta do some growing well before that you never went through this yeah, well, the first company, it was definitely more of a hobby. You you treat your business like a hobby, you'll get paid like it's a hobby. And with, with this next one, I, I was really committed and I wanted to treat it like a business. I wanted it to pay me like a business. And when I went to events and I saw all the top earners on stage, I decided to model them, you know, figure out what it is that sets them apart. What are they doing differently than what I'm doing? And let's go ahead and figure it out, model them. And why couldn't I have the same success they do? If I'm as passionate, if I'm willing to work hard and I've always had a work ethic, so a really good work ethic. So I just knew if I learned the skills that those people knew, I could have the success they were having. Mm. What was the light bulb moment? that you learned or something that maybe was an event that you went to that after that moment, things really start taking off for you. Oh, I've had so many. I don't have just one. I would say it got to the point where when I really started to going to conferences and I started to gain su some success, I realized that my success was not dependent on my upline on my cross line, it was really dependent on myself. And I had a lot of work to do on my beliefs. Did I really believe that I could be successful? Um, when I, I always share this story when I, when I get to speak that in my high school yearbook, you know, everyone was saying they wanted to be a doctor, they wanted to be a lawyer. My ambition in life was to have a big, happy family. And thank God I was blessed with, with just that. But I, I was definitely not most likely to succeed. And so I really had this, I, I really had this deep desire to be successful at something. And I knew I had to go to work. So I guess as my belief started to, to grow, I realized I had control over this. And when that, the, I guess the light bulb moment was really knowing that if I wanted this bad enough, and I was willing to work hard enough on myself, and I cared enough about other people to help them, I could make this work for me, and it could really change our entire family's financial blueprint. How does one increase their belief? Oh, that's a good question. Especially in themselves, right? They, yeah. they can go to the events, and they see that, uh, especially someone from you, you said you had like a kind of rough upbringing, but somehow you managed to pay yourself through school. Uh, you obviously believe in yourself, um, even though you didn't grow up the best, you know, the ideal, how does one develop that? Yeah, that's a great question. I, you know, I always say you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. And I've told my kids that forever, you know, choose wisely who you're spending time with. And in the beginning, quite honestly, the, the people I would, I was surrounding myself with in the beginning weren't people that were going to take me to the next level. So my mentors were podcasts that I'd be listening to, books that I'd be reading. I, I give John Maxwell a lot of credit because he's one of my mentors that I've followed. Um, I have met him personally, but I have never like privately coached with him, but he's been my mentor for years. I've read so many of his books. I've listened to pretty much every YouTube video I could find you know, on him, and he was a mentor for me. So I had people like him pouring belief into me and he didn't even know it. And he's one of many, Simon. I, I listen to podcasts like this and listen to success stories of other people. And I knew it was a choice that for other people to believe in me, I had to believe in myself first. And if I wanted to be a leader and I wanted to be successful at this, I needed people to follow me and they're not going to follow me if I don't believe in myself. So I just knew it was one of those things. It was not it was non-negotiable. I had to work on my belief in myself and get to the point where I, I was bulletproof that, you know, when I had a no come my way, it wasn't going to set me, set me, you know, down. It wasn't going to take me out of the game. And it took a while. That's not an overnight thing. I mean, I, I've spent years reading books and really working on myself, going to conferences and taking this very, very seriously. Um, one thing you and I share, I read The Purpose Driven Life long ago, and that that book really opened my eyes also. Like that was a big game changing book for me and my and my path too. And I just believe God put me here to make a difference. And so I just continue to learn and grow every single day. What what does he have next for me and how can I impact more people? Very, very similar to, to how you you feel. Because you must have had a lot of doubt. I mean, you uh, when you uh, went to your third company, right? You said your uh, your first two, you didn't have much success, and then you had a success. You've been there for ten years and didn't have much success. There must be a lot of doubts. Like, why am I doing this? This is really work. I did ten years, and I'm not where people are, right? 
So what was the thinking behind behind that? Like, I can still do, do, do this. Was it just a personal development and slowly changing the way? Because we all have doubts, right? Yeah, um, it, I definitely had doubts. I think I just finally got to the point where I was real with myself. And I knew I could have been more successful in that last business, but I chose not to. It, I really chose not to. It wasn't that I couldn't have had success there. Um, I could have made it work, but for whatever reason, I guess I just wasn't ready. When I got to that third company, I was ready. I was all in. I, tell me what to do. I'll do it. I was coachable. I, it, it, the, the light bulb went on for me that I was in control of my success. So if I wanted to be successful, I, I had to change the way I thought about the business, the products, and really, you know, looking back, I mean, I've always been a health and wellness person, and I was not in that field at all. Um, so I, but I still found success because what I did was I got to work. I, I saw what the top people were doing, and I said, all right, what are they doing differently? They're treating it like a business, where I was treating it more like a hobby, like, okay, Scott's going to watch the kids for a couple hours so I can have some mom time and get out of the house and go visit with some ladies. Like, that's how I viewed it. And it was fun to make some a little extra money but then I got goal driven I wrote my goals down I did our you know daily method of operation I did my all the things I needed to do I started to get to work and I took it very very seriously and then the success started happening then I started earning incentive trips and once you get a little taste of that then you realize okay I can totally see why I wasn't successful prior and what I changed to get here and then ever since then I've just been on a path of what do I need to improve on? What do I need to improve on? I'm never satisfied with where I'm at. I'm always wanting to improve. It's very interesting. You said you chose not to be successful. So real quickly, what did you mean? You, what were what some, some of the things you did that, made you, that you made decisions that you chose not to be successful? You know, in the, in the first company that I was only with for, you know, maybe a year, year and a half, and then the second one, I was there, there for 10 years. I went to a couple conferences, but I didn't make conferences a must. And, you know, everyone knows in this industry, they're non-negotiable. If you want to be a leader and you want to be successful, you don't miss a conference. So I chose not to go to all the conferences back then. I chose not to make that a priority. I, I didn't write goals down. I didn't do vision boards. I didn't I didn't even allow myself to dream big back then. So it, it was really this, the conscious decision that I treated it like it was a hobby. And so when, when I got to that, that third business and I thought, all right, I'm going to do something with this, I had to choose to take it very seriously. And I really, I changed my thought patterns, my mindset around what I was doing. I looked at it more like, uh, this is a gift, um, that I, that I have that I can share with other people, not it's a job to get a paycheck. And I really, really looked at it very, very differently. And, and when I started treating it differently, the results started happening for me. I like that. It's a gift, not a job. Not something I have to do. I get to do, right? Right. Here's my favorite question. In your 27 years, what is your worst moment in this profession? To the point, most people have quit, but you didn't, and that's why you are where you are today. Mm, I've had a few of them, and it's really the same, the same topic. I have had a few people come on that had all the potential in the world, that have been successful in other companies. I felt like when I moved to this health and wellness company seven years ago, I felt like they could really quickly not only earn a six-figure income, they could probably out-earn me. They were that talented, that gifted, and they chose to walk away. And that's just, a, it feels like a, a kick in the stomach because you know they've got the potential. You know they can do this. They've got the skills, but you can't want it for someone else more than they want it for themselves. And so I had a few of those disappointments, several of them. And I just I just had to sit back. And my husband's always so impressed with how I handle this when, when it happens. Um, you know, I can sit back and look at it. And it's it's really a timing thing. And, and maybe they were just at the point where this, this this was not in God's plan for them right now. And it's not maybe ever, you know, maybe someday they'll come back. I have someone getting ready to, to sign with me now to do the business that's watched me for seven years, seven years. She's watched me and she's finally ready. So I really think it's a timing thing and you can't get discouraged when people walk away. Um, it will happen. You know, I've had people come and go in my business and as gut wrenching as it can be at the moment when you're hearing it, if you can step back, and, and realize it is no fun to drag people. 
And I am not in the convincing business. I'm not going to convince you that it is the right time for you. And this is the right vehicle for you. It really has to be it has to be genuinely for you with the right timing in order for it to work for you. If I really beg and plead for you to stay, are you really going to have success? You know, probably not. So having to let go and then move on and not let it, you know, sometimes it can take you out for a day. You might have a pity party on something like that, but boy, you got to, you got to, pick right back up and get back on the, the saddle again the next day because you can't let it take you out of the game. People are praying for a solution that you have and a gift that you have for them. And if I spend too much time dwelling on what's what's happened or who's left, then I'm missing out on opportunity right in front of me. Uh, absolutely. And uh, you said someone joined you after watching you seven years. How do you follow up with people? Because follow-ups are really important. You talk about timing. I always believe there's never a bad prospect. It's just the wrong time for the right prospect. So how did you follow this prospect and how did she, you know, she went from not interested seven years ago to reaching out and joining now? Well, the key to that one is consistency. I showed up every day for the last seven years. Everyone knows what I'm doing. Uh, my passion is every bit as high as it was seven years ago. If not, I'm more excited. So I've showed up con continuously. I've followed up. I've stayed in touch and I do that with, with all of my prospects. Stay in touch. You know, follow up with them until until they actually get started with you and, and are on your team. Keep following up with them. Keep following up with them. But consistency is absolutely hands down key because I show up every single day when she's ready. Who does she reach out to? Me. Hmm. Well, yes, consistency. Consistency. Um, how do you stay consistent? How do you stay consistent? It's just part of my, it, it's my identity now. Um, I'm, I'm so into working out and fitness that even though I, I literally do write it in my calendar every single day that I'm working out, I write it there, but it's going to happen whether it's in my calendar or not. It's my identity. Well, that's the same thing with my business. My, my business is non-negotiable. When we're on vacation, I still touch it every day. I might just do one hour of business every day, but I still touch it every day because I take it very seriously. It, it is a business to me. So it's non-negotiable. Being consistent is non-negotiable. Touching my business every day, doing those income producing activities. I have so much fun. I enjoy my, my time when I'm not working. I travel, I vacation, I do all of those fun things, but my business is a priority and those, those things have to be done first. That switching topics a little bit, uh, you've been in, pro in the profession for 27 years. What are some of the major changes you've seen over these years? Mm, going to online, you know, the, the first 20 years I went into people's homes and I would load up my car with all these products and go to people's homes and set it up. And, you know, people don't really do home parties anymore. Like I, I don't ever get invited to them anymore. It's just kind of a thing of the past. Um, and now people have online opportunities and there's so many great network marketing companies out there and you can work from your phone and you can work from anywhere and you can travel and work your business. And it's just, it's, that's the biggest thing is that you can do it completely online and it's so simple. The tools are all there for you. So we used to have to do a lot and make up our own tools and reinvent the wheel all the time. Now we can plug into systems that are already in place and not spin our wheels, plug into what, you know, your team has for you what your company has for you and and go for it so it, it really has you know it's not things aren't complicated anymore it's easier and easier to work your business and the, the opportunity is greater and greater do you see people more open to direct selling in general as opposed to when you first started or more or less still the same I, I see it. I see it much bigger now I, I, I there's something and I, I never I won't get this saying right but um something to the effect of um, people were saying, um, are you involved in network marketing? And now they're going to be asking what network marketing company are you involved with? Because everybody's going to be involved with a company. And I, 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 see it everywhere and you know i i have i'm fortunate enough that my oldest is um 20 he'll be 25 um in february and he is full-time in the business with me and we've attracted a lot of millennials now to our organization and it's amazing how many of them are in network marketing they really see the vision of why they would want to do this at such a young age because most of them had parents that worked a, a gazillion hours 
and weren't present with them. Like uh, my hope for my children is that they will be full-time families, that they mm-hmm. will both be home with those kids to get them on the bus, off the bus, be the room, the room mothers, the room fathers, go on field trips with them. Like I was fortunate enough to be able to do. And I think now more people are open to that because so many people are not making enough money with what they're doing and they're open to side income and they really get residual income in the and in how it is priceless residual income is priceless and my my best example of this is you know my husband about 5 years ago gave his 2 weeks notice to his corporate job and he's still there consulting for them because they're still paying him a really nice salary they don't want him to go he still offers a lot of value to them but he works on his terms a few hours a week goes in and out non stressful whatsoever his dad was diagnosed with a terminal cancer and it was devastating for our family and his family is very 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 close and because of the income i was able to bring in from my company he was able to be the full-time caregiver to his father driving him an hour and a half to every single doctor appointment every se- mm. single chemo treatment he was there for him and it was the greatest gift i've been ever i've been able to give anyone was this gift because it gave him the the honor to be with his dad when his dad needed him the most and that is priceless and that's when you know i really realized that this gift that i have to share with people can change not only their family's financial blueprint but it can change it can change things like this and help families be able to be there when they need to be there with their loved ones and you know i i don't want wish that on anyone but it really opened my eyes to how special what we have really is yeah you know there's a saying if everyone knew what residual income is really like they will work 10 times harder it's really and it's like a gift that we have to give to others we have to share to others absolutely Hey, thank you for sharing. You've been awesome, Cindy. As we go towards the end of the show, some quick questions to pick your brain. Sure. Okay. The first one is, what is one of your favorite success quotes that motivates you? Oh, my favorite I, I my favorite Bible verse is in my planner every single week I write it in I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and then um, my favorite business quote is what the Jim Rohn one that I gave you earlier you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with choose wisely um, I I believe that in your business if you are not where you want to be in your network marketing business then Think of who you're surrounding yourself with. And if you don't have people that are at the level that you want to be, if you're looking to be a six-figure income earner, surround yourself with six-figure income earners. If you're looking to be a seven-figure income earner, surround yourself with them. If you, if that's not possible for you, that's where you can listen to podcasts. You can read books. You can absolutely surround yourself with the people. Don't, don't, don't use it as an excuse that you can't because you can with technology the way that it is. So I would say that one. What is one habit that's helped you become successful? Daily method of operation. I have the same habit every single day. I, I have the same morning routine every single day, no matter where I am, no matter where I'm traveling. It, I, I just make it happen. And I really think that does it does help people become more successful. When you do the same things day in and day out, it becomes habit after after a time. And then you don't feel good if you don't do them. So if I don't work out for a day or two, I don't like the way I physically feel. If I skip my, my daily method of operation, I don't like the way it feels in my business. So I, I've just gotten to the point where it's become such habit for me that it, it has to happen. So I, I feel good. What is your uh, morning routine? Um, it's similar to yours. I, I, I start in the morning. I, um, I do have a cup of coffee first thing in the morning. I know you sip on yours for a whole week. Do you still do that? No, I don't drink coffee anymore. So I okay. just slowly transition out of coffee. I think when you listen okay. to the podcast of mine, I think 152, one, I was slowly weeding myself off of, uh, weaning myself out of coffee. So I sip a little bit, but now like no coffee. Okay, so I have a cup of organic coffee in the morning and I come right to my desk and that's where I will have my quiet time. 
that's where I get my my act together for the morning. Like I'm, I've already kind of planned out the day before what I'm doing that day, but I do like I, I write in my planner what groups I have to go into on Facebook, um, where I want to post, where I want to spend my time. And I spend about a good hour in the morning at my desk getting all those things done. So posting in the different groups I need to post into, going where I need to be on social media. I only focus on about two platforms. Um, I do Facebook and, and I, I post on Instagram, but Facebook and, and LinkedIn are my two that I that I spend my most time on. And then I get on with my day. I do my workout. And then once I'm done with working out, I'm at my desk and I start my calls. And I usually do most of my um, prospecting calls in the morning hours. And then I, I serve my team more in the afternoon. And then sometimes I'll do events. This is a busy week for me this week. I've got three evening events this week. Um, and and I, I just love to see my calendar full. And, and when I'm feeling a little bit in a in a lull with my business, I look at my calendar and it's usually pretty apparent why. Mm. And then I know, okay, mm. I've got to get my act together and, and get a few more appointments on my calendar because I, I, at the end of the day, I want to feel like I am really leading my team. If I am not, if my calendar isn't full and I'm not doing what I should be doing, how can I coach my team to do that? I have to walk the walk. Yeah, definitely. Um, what time do you wake up? Um, without an alarm, I'm usually up by 5.30 every morning. Very cool. I, I love what you talked about. Um, and for you listening out there, the reason it seems like Cindy can get a lot of stuff done, she's very intentional. Right? She plans her day. Um, very specific, not just I'm sure she plans out your prospects and also where she is posting. She's not like, oh, where should You know, a lot of you listening out there, <clears throat> the reason you're not productive, you pick up your phone, oh, what should I be doing today? No, and that wastes a lot of time. Cindy there... If you should go back and rewind this, hit the rewind button a few times. She's very intentional which group she is in and where she has to post. It's very planned out, and that's why she can get a lot, a lot of stuff done. Hey, that was pure gold. Really, really good. Uh, so is that, that's your, when you say your DMO, that is your DMO. Yeah, so I have so many connections I want to make every single day with prospects, with my clients, with my business builders. Um, every single day I'm contacting people. I am a big believer in adding value to other people. And so I show up every day and I do that. And, you know, when you, when you have that kind of an attitude, when you're not trying to get people into your business and um, it's not, you know, it, 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 and you're really wanting to help other people and serve other people, it is so beautiful. And people know if if you're genuine or if you're not. And so that's one thing that I really work with my team on, my business builders on, is have a heart of being genuine and being here to serve other people. And people will come to you. They will come to you. But if you're just going after people to get them, it's it's just not, it's, it's not attractive. You want to be like a magnet that people are coming to you because you add such value to their lives. And if they're going to do this, they're going to want to do it with you. What's the best piece of advice you ever received? Mm, one of the best was don't do for one what you can't do for a thousand. Um, it was a mm. corporate trainer and it was a prior company. And I really listened to that because I was definitely more of an enabler when I got started in, in this business and I wanted to help everybody. I took my heart, my servant's heart like overboard and I wanted to do everything for everyone. And I, because I didn't realize I would have a team of a thousand one day. And so I, I did it all. And that was such great advice because, you know, now I'm looking at 42,000 and I can't, I can't do that. I can't be everything for everyone. So now the way that I do my business is I try to plug people into the system. I teach them, I mentor them, but I empower them. I do not enable them anymore. What's your favorite prospecting tool? Say you have a qualified prospect who is interested, do you send them a video first? Do you talk to them first? What do you like to use? Yeah, I like to use videos because uh, I've definitely spent way too many hours on the phone or Zoom with people that re really weren't qualified. If they're not willing to watch a video first, they probably will waste your time. So I, I, I'm definitely a video person. When I know they've watched the video, I know they're at least interested enough to get on the phone with me. And you know, I, you have to be, you have to guard your time because that's the one thing you can't get back, and it's priceless. Do you have a favorite online resource like a Dropbox or Evernote or favorite app on your phone that you could recommend? Um, we have some company apps. You know, we have our own app that uh, that we can share videos with. That's really cool. Um, so, so I use our company apps. Uh, I'm trying to think non non company. 
Mm, you know, I just found out about um, this DMO company that, you know, I, everybody else may know about it. I've never heard about it. Team Z. And it's like a, a great place to do your DMOs from. Uh, you put all your contacts in there and it at, and you, what your income goals are and it calculates it all for you. Have you heard of this? Yes. Yep. Okay. And I just found out about this. So that that's a tool that, that, you know, other, a lot of network marketing companies are using that can be very, very helpful to keep you organized and make sure you're connecting with the right people every single day. You had mentioned about purpose-driven uh, life. Uh, any other book, one or two books you could recommend that network marketers should read? Oh, GoPro Eric Worre is a must for network marketers, and especially for those of you that might be struggling with your belief in the industry. If I talk to anyone that is at all skeptical about network marketing in the industry overall, I tell them Eric Worre, GoPro. He has enough belief in the industry for all of us put together. It, he's amazing. I go to his events because I I love that, and I love I love bringing people into that environment because I do I do believe network marketing is the greatest industry. I, I'm bulletproof in my belief, and I see that in a lot of people that want success. Their belief isn't where it needs to be. So Eric Worre for that. Um, personal development books. You really have to have that. 10 out of 10 belief in yourself too. So um, I've, d I've done a lot with John Maxwell right now. Um, I'm actually coming to LA to a M Marissa Peer um, conference. Um, she does a lot with self-confidence. So if you're struggling in belief in yourself, she's a great one to follow. This is called Ultimate Confidence. Um, my favorite book is usually the one I'm reading right now. I, I just love to read and um, and I do a lot on audio too because I can listen while I'm, you know, multitask while I'm in the car driving and all of that. Here's the last question, the million dollar question. You ready? I'm ready. So imagine you had to start all over again and you knew no one. So you didn't know your husband, didn't know your kids, but you had all your current knowledge, skills, and wisdom. What's the first place you go or the first thing you do to find prospects and build a network marketing business from scratch? Ooh, I would say for sure social media. I mean, I, I, I've taken my LinkedIn connections, I've, I've tripled them in six months. Um, it's very, very easy to make friends on social media. We didn't have that 27 years ago, you guys. We had to, I mean, we literally made friends in public. Uh, we couldn't grow global companies 27 years ago. Now, at our fingertips, we have social media. And no matter what your platform is, you know, younger people tend to gravitate towards Instagram. You know, I'm, I'm 51, so I still love Facebook. It's treated me so, so well. We can meet so many new peoples and, and people and new friends through social media. So I would absolutely start there. What's the first place you go on LinkedIn? You had mentioned LinkedIn, so social media or Facebook. Well, what would you do? Join a specific group or where would you find people? I would join groups that you're interested in. So I'm, I'm into running and fitness. So I would join running and fitness groups. Um, if I wasn't yet married or a mom, I wouldn't be in those groups. But if you have pets, um, I, I want to have a golden doodle one day. So I'm in golden doodle groups right now. You know, what, whatever that is, your, your things that you are genuinely interested in, those are the groups you go. I would never join a hunting group because I don't hunt. So I would have nothing to, uh, to talk to and connect with people over. So what the, anything that you are interested in, if you love to go out to eat, if you like to camp, if you like golf, if you like sports, whatever it is, you join those groups of interest, you make friends in there, and pretty soon you're really growing your following. And I've been so intentional about that. This last year, I've kicked it up a whole nother notch. And I, I started growing and I am doing Zooms now with people from all over the world, from different countries now. And we're able to do that now because of technology. So I would say to the new people that maybe you're brand spanking new, there has never been a better time to grow a network marketing business. You, you don't need to you know, know what we knew 27 years ago. Starting right now, you are the platforms and what you have available to you. Oh my gosh, the opportunities are absolutely endless. Thank you. As we wrap up, any last words or advice? And then what's the best way our listeners can connect with you, Cindy? Okay, so they can connect with me. My name is spelled a little differently. It's C Y N D I Walter W A L T E R dot com. That's my website that has all the information on there, even links to my Facebook and all of that. Um, I would say my best advice is don't give up. The only way to fail in this industry is by quitting. Don't give up. And if you're struggling in one of those areas, if you're struggling in belief in yourself, 
get to work and figure that out. If you're struggling with belief in the industry, belief in your company, your products, you get to work and figure that out. There are so many great mentors out there, such as you, Simon, and you can find coaches, get a coach. You know, I have hired a lot of coaches over the years because I wanted extra help because I wanted to take my business to the next level. So like I said in the beginning, if you treat this like a hobby, it'll pay you like a hobby. But if you really, really want to be successful and you wouldn't be tuning into this podcast, if you didn't, then you really need to up your game. If you can't afford coaching right now, there is so much free coaching available to you. Just get on YouTube, search for people, watch videos, listen to stuff day in and day out, put only good stuff in and learn and grow and be willing to be coachable and don't give up. Don't give up because your success is right on the other side. So don't give up. And on Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And today, you may hang out with Cindy Walter. So keep up the momentum and head over to MLNation.com and just click on the podcast tab and the show notes and all the nuggets of wisdom and the resources that Cindy shared will be right there. Hey, you know to be successful in life and business and network marketing, you must help others. So Cindy, thanks again for sharing your valuable time. We're grateful to you. And ML Nation, we appreciate you for having a positive impact on millions of distributors worldwide. Thank you so much again, and God bless you. Oh, God bless you. Thank you. What an honor.